We welcome our uh, third panel, and we're reasonably up to, up to time. Uh, we'll try and keep that way, but we welcome uh, Professor uh, Edward Acton, the Vice-Chancellor of the University of East Anglia, and Professor Phil Jones, the head of the CRU at the University of East Anglia. Thank you both very much indeed for coming in front of the committee uh, this afternoon. Uh, Ian Stewart will just begin this section. Uh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Good to see you. Could I uh, start uh, by addressing the issue of uh, alleged intent to mislead, to the core of this, this issue, I suppose? Now, uh, to Professor Jones, if you don't mind first, there's been some speculation that the primary data has been lost or manipulated. Are all the raw data used in your various analyses accessible and verifiable? The simple answer is yes. I mean, the, the, most of the same basic data are, avail, are available in the United States in something called the Global Historical Climatology Network. They've been downloadable there for a number of years. So people have been able to take the data, do what any methods of uh, uh, assessment, the quality of the data, and derive their own gridded product and compare that with other workers. So... so um, so um, there's, there's two groups in America that, that, we, that we compare with. There's also in the two additional groups, one in Russia and one in Japan, that also produce similar records to ourselves, and they all show uh, pretty much the same sort of course of instrumental temperature change since the 19th century compared to today. So you believe that the, the data is robust uh, and verifiable? Yes. C can I ask you then just to explain to some of us are not scientists on this committee, I uh, have to tell you. But can you just explain to us um, how it could be verified? Is, was that implicit in what you've just told us? That was implicit yeah. in what I, what I told you because we're, we're all working independently. So um, we may be using a lot of common data, but the ways of going from the raw data to a derived product of gridded temperatures and then the average for the hemisphere and the globe mm. is totally independent between the, the different groups. I, um, I was fascinated to read the, the exchange of emails and the question of divergence that came up uh, as a non-scientist, but can you tell us where primary uh, temperature data has been recalibrated? Uh, is there an audit trail uh, showing the adjustments and why they were made? And will these adjustments be reviewed as part of the inquiry and external reappraisal of the science itself? Well, there's two questions there. The first goes back to the adjustments we made to the temperature data in the 1980s. And we made that for the valid scientific reasons at the time. And we did that by assessing each station compared to its neighbouring stations to see which ones were uh, agreeing with each other and which, and which weren't. And so based on that, we made some... Um, alterations to some of the data to, to make the series homogeneous, which is the word we use in climatology to mean consistent <coughs> through time. And all those adjustments we made and all the stations we looked at are documented in reports like, like these. This is the one for the Southern Hemisphere. There's a much bigger one for the Northern Hemisphere. Um, so it's all documented there, what we did in the 1980s. And since then, we've obviously added more station data as more has become available, more countries have digitised more data. We've added that in, and we've re reported on that in our peer review publications in, in 2003 and 2006. Okay. Uh, is there anything you'd like to add to that, Professor Arkin? I'd like to make a general statement. Um, no, no, I'm not allowing you to make any general statements. Okay. We'll ask you questions. Very good. You can couch your comments towards my <laughs> question. <laughs> I think the answer was, it was spot on. Yeah, All right. Okay. Much. Now, Professor Jones, um, are some of CRU's problems caused by what is perceived to be exaggerated claims? Um, for instance, are you comfortable when your staff at the CRU are quoted as saying that, quotes, within a few years, winter snowfall will become a very rare and exciting event. Children just aren't going to know what snow is. Are these exaggerated? Then are you comfortable that, with such claims? That would be exaggerated, and I don't think I ever said that. Or maybe one, of, maybe of, one of our staff members might have said it, but I don't, I, I've, I've never said that. And do you agree with it? 
I don't agree with it. I think there's always going to be some snowfall in the future, e even in Britain, even when we get, even if we do get to be four or five degrees warmer, we're still going to have a cold spells in winter. Maybe not as cold as this particular one, but we'll still have cold spells during during the winter, and children will still see some snowfall. Now, again, from memory, um, in the emails, uh, the, you explain that actually some of the criticisms meant that you revisited your own data and your methodology and you made some uh, corrections. But if I remember correctly, you also said that the corrections made no significant difference to the outcomes. Is that correct? Yes, this relates to some work I did in 1990 on looking at the uh, urbanisation influence on temperature. Obviously, if you're measuring temperature in the centre of London, it's going to be warmer than it would be in, in the rural uh, areas around London. So, but what's really important with urbani uh, the urbanisation effect is the growth of the city through time. In fact, lo London's urbanisation has been roughly the same as it now as it was in 1900. There's still, it's still warmer in central London, comparable as, as it was a century ago. But what I was talking about here was looking at other regions of the world. And I started look, uh, with some colleagues in 1990 looking at uh, the uh, Australia, western parts of the Soviet Union, as was, and eastern China. And I revisited that work in 2008 in another paper. And there I worked with a, a different Chinese colleague who was working at the China Meteorological Administration. And he had just spent a number of years assessing the quality of all the data across China. About, from about 700 stations across China. And I asked him specifically for the same stations that I had used in 1990. And he sent me those data, and I reprocessed them in the same way as I did in 1990, and got essentially the same result. That was the same temperature trends over the period 1954 to 83. What I concluded in that paper, because it was, much, much, it was a longer period than 1983, it went through to obviously 2007, then I concluded there that there, there, there had been an urbanization effect in China, which we hadn't accounted for in the, in the earlier paper in 1990. And that effect was about 0.1 degrees Celsius per decade over the period from 1951 to 2004. Um, so, but there was still additional warming over China above and beyond that. Um, so it's something that we need to reconsider. and I. In the paper, I put it down to the, the rapid growth in, in, in economic development of China over the last 20, 25 years or so. Having, it's, something, it's something we need, we need to do more research on. Having come to that conclusion, what would the normal process be? Would you put that in the public domain? Or would that, that paper was published in 2008. With all the variations? With all the, yes. So it, and, it, it, and the recalculation? It, it repeated the work from 1990 and it came to a slightly different conclusion yeah. because I was looking at a longer time series and um, some more numbers, essentially. Is it, sorry, before you come in, just a general point for my sake, please. Is it right that the last three decades have respectively been the, the highest temperatures on record for each decade? Uh, yes. Is so the, the, the decade that's just finished, the 2000s, is the highest. It's the warmest. Going back, back to 1850, back. it's 0.16 warmer than the 1990s, and that is warmer than, than the 1980s. Okay, thank you. Briefly, Graham, on the same issue. It is, it's just yeah. following up uh, Ian, Ian's question. It's nice to meet Professor Jones. Having